Hello and welcome to Louise Singleton Creations. In today's video, I finally got chance to have a play with some brand new pigments from my lovely friend Laura over at Laura's Art Corner. She was so kind to send me lots of beautiful new pigments to try out and I was so excited to have a go but until now didn't have the chance. So that's what I'm going to be doing today using some of my new pigments to make a resin bowl and a pair of resin coasters. If that sounds like fun stay tuned and enjoy the video. For today's project I'm going to be using Let's Resin's Epoxy Resin. It's a one to one ratio and you mix it by volume. Here I've got a large silicon cup also from Let's Resin. Unfortunately it's not a good demonstration of mixing resin because I went past the mark but never mind. <laughs> I've gone with marker pen over the you know the um, measuring gauge on the side because sometimes it's hard to see. And so while you can see just at the bottom those little black lines, you'll see I went over a little bit. But it turned out okay anyway. I really love this resin. I've never had any problems with it and it's a really good versatile all-rounder. So once I'd measured out 100 millilitres of part A and 100 millilitres of part B, kind of, just about anyway, <laughs> Um, I gave it a really good mix, carefully, not too fast, for around two minutes to make sure it was completely combined. The mould I'm going to be using today is also from Let's Resin and I will put a link in the description. I think at the time which I got this one, I was sent it from America. I'm not sure if it's available in the UK or not. It might be now, they do tend to change the way they you know, stock the different sites. So it might be available. I will have a look and give you the links in the video description. So yeah, it's a really good mould. The only thing that sometimes happens is those supports that I was just showing you can sometimes cause a little bit of a um, indentation in the bottom of whatever you're making. So that can be an issue. I was going to show you a way around that in this video, but things changed a little bit and I will explain that in a minute. Right, so let's have a little look at the pigment powders and pastes which Laura sent me. Laura has her own range of resin pigments which she's created and I love them. I really had a hard time choosing the ones I loved the most. And I love the logo too, don't you? The dragonfly logo on the top. Those are all Laura's own range of pigments. She's also sent me some Lores pigments, which I haven't tried before. So that's going to be really good for me to have a go with those. Although I don't think I used any of those today. And yeah, she sent me all kinds of things from glitters to glass glitters and pigment paste and pigment powders. I'm so lucky to have such lovely friends. So over at Laura's Art Corner, you will also find resin and moulds, lots and lots of different resin additions and Aquacast as well. If you would like to try out Aquacast casting compound, Laura sells that too. So you really need to go over and have a look at the huge range of things she's got and there will be a link in the description. Right then, let's get on with pouring the bowl. Now, my original plan was to do lots of separate layers to have like a stripey effect. I was going to leave a couple of hours between each pour and that way it would just merge a little bit because it would have thickened up. And yeah, that was my original plan. And I kind of underestimated or would you say overestimated <laughs> well anyway I got my estimations wrong with my resin I should have done a lot less to just do one layer to start with in fact the 200 milliliters of resin which I mixed up was almost enough to fill the whole bowl so I needed to change my plan a little bit 
So anyway, what I've done is poured about 40 millilitres into that smaller jug and added some of the Tinseltown glass glitter so that I could pour a gold rim around what will be the top of the bowl. And as you can see, I had to pull it aside a little bit because it's a little bit awkward to fill. As you will have seen, I just added the glitter layer in a few different spots because it was a little bit hard to fill. But once it was in, because the Let's Resin Epoxy Resin is so good at self-leveling, it only took a minute to make sure it was the same all the way around. I gave it a little, little bit of a squidge and a bang. And yeah, it as you'll see when it comes out of the mould, it was very even all the way around. You will have probably noticed that I haven't pre-mixed all my different pigments like I normally would. I was kind of making it up as I went along. Sometimes I like to do that and that's what I did this time. So I've poured a little bit more resin into another jug and this time I'm using that beautiful blue which I'll put the name of on the screen. I think it was Mermaid Shimmer and it is so beautiful and that's the Lorez one so... I think I said earlier that I didn't use any of the Lorez ones, but yeah, I was wrong. I used that one. <laughs> and actually, that one was the main one you see in the finished piece, and it is so beautiful. I really love that, and I will definitely be using that one again very soon. So once I'd given it a really good mix, I decided because I was going to be filling most of the bowl all in one go, well, all of the bowl all in one go, <laughs> I decided to add it from the middle and do it kind of like a puddle pour rather than trying to get it down the edges like I did with the gold glitter. So yeah, I'm just trying to show you it there. It was a really bright sunny day. The sun was streaming through the window and it was really messing with my camera. So I'm sorry if you can't see things as well as you should be able to. You would think that bright sunshine would really help, wouldn't you? But it really didn't. Um, so yeah, as you can see there, I was trying to get it down the sides. But in the end, I just decided to start adding from the middle um, with all the other colours. <laughs> Uh, you learn as you go along, don't you, with these things? And that was a little bit of a tricky mould to fill. But as long as you start just from the top and don't try to get it down the sides, it turns out really nice and it's really easy that way. Right, the next colour I decided to go with was the white gold pigment powder, which I really love. And that's the Laura's Art Corner range of pigment powders. And so I've got some more resin there. Poured in a good generous amount of the pigment powder, gave it a really good mix and then added it to the middle. Once that was in, I added the last little bit of the Mermaid Shimmer in the middle and at that stage I needed to mix up some more resin because although it was too much for what my original plan was, it wasn't quite enough to completely fill the mould so I did do some more. I think it was another 100 millilitres that I mixed. So I cut that little bit of the video out because you didn't need to see me mixing more resin again. <laughs> The next pigment I decided to use was the Deep Blue Hyacinth. So I'm just pouring some more resin, it's just a little bit out of frame. And then adding the Deep Blue Hyacinth pigment powder. Look at that, isn't it beautiful? I love it. It looks so good in the pot. So yeah, there's some, I'm putting that into the larger amount of resin. And in that small amount of resin you can see next to it, I decided to add some of the blue sparkly glitter which I think is called boysenberry sparkle, something like that. Oh dear, I'll put it on the screen. You know, I'm terrible at remembering the names of all these different things. But anyway, <laughs> I mixed it all up really well and added those next. So then it was just a case of alternating them and just do it, finishing the puddle pour until it was all completely full. Uh, yeah, very simple really, not much more to it. Look at that golden golden white, how it shimmers in the sun. That is one good thing about getting some sunshine, you see all the shimmer. Yeah, it's beautiful. 
So you know how I was saying about the indentations that you can get from the support on the inside of the mould? My idea was, originally, at this stage I was just going to do a very, very thin layer so that it just covered the top of that middle insert section just enough to cover it basically and then I was going to let it cure because I think it's the weight of having a lot of resin on top of the support that causes the indentations so I wanted to try and do just one really thin clear layer and then finish it off after that had cured to see if it would remedy the situation but I couldn't do that maybe one of you would like to try it and let me know if it worked so yeah we're nearly done and then it will be time to have a look at it 24 hours later so as if by magic we've time traveled a day ahead and let's have a look at how it turned out it was quite easy actually to get it out the mold it folded back quite nicely so it's just a case of gently teasing the sides up turning it inside out and then pulling out the middle part right then so when i first saw it out of the mold i had a mixture of feelings about it i loved it from the outside i loved the gold rim and how lovely and level that was and how it had all sunk and there, were, there weren't stray pieces of gold everywhere and i think it looks like sea foam on an ocean i really love that side from the side that mermaid shimmer is gorgeous and look can you see the indentations as it catches the light on the inside and I'm just not happy with the inside of it at the, this stage so there was there's another step to come so don't turn off yet <laughs> so yeah from the outside absolutely gorgeous love the mermaid shimmer and that white gold together really beautiful the dark hyacinth blue seems to have got a bit lost I think it stayed on the base and didn't go down very much but I'm, I'm sure it did contribute to the finished result. So what I decided to do then was to add one more layer inside the bowl to make that inside look a little bit more interesting. I mixed up the same colours as before so it would blend in nicely and not be too much of an obvious contrast. So we've got the white gold, the mermaid shimmer and the deep hyacinth blue. I poured the deep hyacinth blue in a ring around the edge, not too near the edge of where the, you know, the circle will be. I wanted it to just self-level and find its own way to the shape of the bowl. I didn't want to get any resin where it shouldn't be. So yeah, close to the walls of the bowl, but not too close. And so once I'd poured that, it was just a case of alternating the colors just in the same way as we did with the bowl and I finished off with some clear resin to help to just make, get everything moving I was hoping it would blend a little bit more than it did but I think it's because it's not a very thick layer you know if this was a coaster and I was doing the same technique I would get a different effect and you will see that because I had some left over and I'm next after I've done this I'm doing two coasters in the same way and you will see the different effect. So yeah, because this wasn't very deep, it didn't kind of, it just didn't behave in the same way as it would with a coaster. But you'll see what I mean soon. Once I'd finished pouring, I gave it a quick blast with my heat gun just to pop any bubbles and to try and get it moving a little bit. And... I put that aside and used my leftover resin, because I always seem to do too much, <laughs> to make two coasters. So let's look at the coasters now. 
Okay then, so I have found the first mould I came across in my mould draw, which is my hexagonal mould from Moulds and Shapes. And I decided I would probably have just enough to do two coasters. And I'm doing it in exactly the same way as I did the inside of the bowl with the deep hyacinth blue around the edge and then alternating the colours in the middle and finishing off with a layer of clear. I decided to add a little bit of interest on the middles with a little bit of gold fusion glass glitter. I just mixed it into my leftover clear resin and poured it on. I didn't do a really thick mixture, it's actually quite thin as you can see because I don't like it when you just get a blob of glitter in the middle of coasters. It reminds me of those buns, is it cherry bakewells? <laughs> Where you get a cherry in the middle and I don't like it. So I wanted it to disperse a little bit and move around rather than just be there in one big splodge. So my mixture isn't too thick and I'm just gently adding it into position. Finally, I took a little heart mould just to empty the last little bits from the bottoms of my um, containers into there. Had no idea how it would turn out, but it's better than just leaving it to cure in the bottom of the jugs and then throwing it away. I thought I might as well see what would happen if I just pour it all in one after the other. Okay, it's 24 hours later and it's time to take them out of the mould. As you can see, they come out of the moulds and shape moulds very easily. And here it is. I think it's very subtle, but also very pretty. I love the striations that have appeared in there. It's definitely better on the top so I will be using the top, not the bottom. It will need a coat of heat resistant resin. Um, I'm not showing that though. And um, yeah, I'm quite happy with those. Seeing as it was just a way of finishing off the extra resin, they turned out very pretty and they will go next to the bowl very nicely. Let's have a look at the heart. I wasn't really expecting very much, but we will see. It's basically just like a glittery blue <laughs> it's all just merged together but I really do like that for anybody that loves blue they would like that as a key ring or a necklace or I don't know a light pull and the ball the as you can see it didn't I did exactly the same thing as I did with the coasters and also what I did do was I added the gold in the middle which I forgot to show you at the time I do need to sand the bottom still. It's a bit wibbly wobbly. But yeah, it's better than it was before I added that. And it covers up the indentations I got from the mould support. And yeah, I'm, overall, I'm really happy with it. I wish that something a little bit more interesting had happened on the inside when I did that final pour. But it's definitely nicer than it was before. So here's some close-ups. And yeah, I'm really happy with the results. Well, we've come to the end of the video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed playing with my new pigments from Laura's Art Corner. And yeah, I will hopefully try out the rest very soon. Don't forget, any links and discount codes will be in the description. If you haven't already subscribed and you would like to, please do that before you go and give me a thumbs up. And I will see you again next time. Thank you for watching and bye for now.